No, no, thank you so much. Uh, we always uh, want the European Union, uh, strategic partner of NATO, to, to be center stage. And I'm very grateful uh, to the government of the Czech Republic, to the U.S. ambassador uh, in Prague, uh, to um, uh, the vice president of the European Parliament, and for the two institutes, think tanks organizing this, this great event. Uh, for inviting me, and it's a privilege for me uh, to be to be with you. Uh, listen, uh, this is a moment of formidable transformation around the world, and uh, uh, we are very proud in NATO to to say uh, that we are the most successful alliance in history, which is true, but also that we have in our genes, in our DNA, uh, a gene of permanent adaptation to a changing environment. Um, and this is a moment when NATO is at its best. Uh, I've been working uh, for, with European and transatlantic affairs for most of my career. Uh, I'm Romanian. I was so proud uh, to, to see uh, so many new members into the alliance. I remember vividly when the Czech Republic, I think next year will be 25 years since you uh, and Poland and Hungary joined, then seven nations, including my own. And now we are seeing uh, 31, soon to be 32 allies. So if Mr. Putin wanted, uh, before he started his bloody war, uh, to have less NATO, he has now more NATO. He believed that we are divided in Europe, uh, America and Canada from its European allies, European Union divided. He has seen more synergy and, 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 and firmness in what we do, both in NATO, in the EU, and between NATO and the EU, like never before. He also believed that uh, he would be able to destroy uh, the identity and the existence uh, of the Ukrainian nation. And uh, you remember the famous essay by Mr. Putin uh, basically saying that Ukraine doesn't exist as a nation. Uh, now, uh, after this uh, big war and also uh, everything that started in 2014 with the illegal annexation of Crimea, I think we have uh, a nation of Ukraine uh, uh, so, so united, so powerful, so brave, and also with a, with, with a sense uh, of national identity like never before. Uh, if uh, uh, the Soviet propaganda and even uh, the Kremlin propaganda was speaking about the Great War, uh, the Second World War, I think for generations of Ukrainians, they will be speaking of this war as the war that really forged their nation. And it's our obligation and interest to, 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 to help Ukraine prevail in this war. Because the aftershocks uh, of, of, this, of this invasion and this war are felt all around the world. And for what happens in Ukraine today and tomorrow matters deeply, not only to Ukrainians or European security or for NATO or EU, but to every single person around this planet. Because if Putin wins, it will send a clear message to him and authoritarian leaders all over the world that war works, that violence works, and the political West uh, will not be able to stop him. If he wins, we all lose. And Ukraine will not be the last target on the list. The Prussian military strategist and writer Karl von Clausewitz famously called war the continuation of politics by other means. So if Putin achieves his political aims through war, then we can expect much more of the same in the decades to come. Not only from Russia, but also in the Indo-Pacific region as well. Uh, President Xi is watching what happens very closely to learn from either the rewards or the cost uh, of Putin's aggression. So the stakes could not be, be higher. So that's why we must not let Putin win, because it's uh, against international law, it's immoral and it's barbaric uh, what they're doing in Ukraine, but also because the consequences will be, will be global. I know and we know together that Ukraine will prevail as an independent nation and with the freedom to choose whatever alliance, whatever future they will seem uh, fit for them. I'm so proud of our European Union friends that are offering to Ukraine the Republic of Moldova, and I hope also Georgia and the Western Balkans, a real perspective to join the family and be able to fulfill the dream of a Europe uh, whole and free. And of course, when conditions will be right, we will also welcome also into NATO, just we have welcomed Finland and soon welcome Sweden amongst our ranks. Together, allies have provided Ukraine with tens of billions worth of high-end military equipment, from anti-tank weapons to advanced artillery and tanks, missiles and air defense systems, and soon F-16 fighter jets. 
And the Czech Republic has played a big part in this support. It was the first NATO ally to supply tanks to Ukraine, it has now delivered around two thirds of its heavy weapons, including howitzers and multiple launch rocket systems to our friends in Ukraine. And you trained thousands of Ukrainian troops. And the Czech people have welcomed over half a million Ukrainian refugees, almost 5% of the Czech population into their homes. You can be proud, we are proud of everything you do as you continue to support freedom and security in Europe. For the war is not only a threat to Ukraine, but to the entire rule-based international order, and to NATO allies, and to our friends around the world. This is why we are massively boosting our own defense and deterrence. Our new defense plans in NATO, 300,000 troops on higher readiness, backed by substantial air and naval combat power. And battle groups stationed from Estonia to Romania, I'd like to thank the Czech Republic for leading the battle group in Slovakia. Through our defense procurement action plan, we have also sent a strong, unambiguous signal to industry for the need to significantly ramp up production of weapons and ammunition in the months and years to come to help Ukraine, but also to replenish our own stocks. And more allies than never are spending 2% of GDP on defense, because as you know, in Vilnius, uh, at our summit in July, all allies committed to spending at least 2% in the years ahead. So one of Putin's aims in fighting this war was to have less NATO, as I mentioned, he has failed utterly. Instead, he has achieved the exact opposite, dramatically more NATO, more united, more determined, and more committed to fulfill our job uh, uh, at a high intensity like, like, like never before. And this is basically, this conflict is not any longer just about the amount of military hardware at our, at our disposal. This war and, and, and Russian aggression more generally poses a threat to our society in many ways. Deterrence and defense extends far beyond bullets and bombs to bits and bytes and a lot more besides. You discussed about secure communications, that's part of that. Russia tried to use its vast energy resources to blackmail us into stopping in supporting Ukraine. He also failed. Europe has moved with incredible speed to wean ourselves off of Russian oil and gas. Russia is also threatening the world with hunger, using the weakest and most defenseless as pawns in this plan. It is also clear that Russia has our critical infrastructure in its sides. I heard the Vice President speaking about critical infrastructure and following the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines, the security of the undersea cables connecting North America, the UK and Europe has become into sharp focus. Earlier this year, NATO allies established a new critical undersea infrastructure coordinating cell and engages with industry and bring key military and civilian stakeholders together to boost the security of our undersea infrastructure. It uses cyber attacks, disinformation campaigns, and election interference in an attempt to undermine our institutions and influence our politics. This is also an ongoing battle for the narrative. And we work a lot between NATO and EU and the G7 uh, and Commissioner Jourova to make sure that we combat this, this disruptive narratives. We also speak and do a lot on communications technologies, including AI, and this will only amplify the battle, will make it harder to tell fact from Kremlin sanctioned fiction and other nations around the world doing the same. So new technologies such as AI, generative AI, autonomous systems, quantum, biotech, are changing the world and changing everything we do in our societies. So they both present incredible opportunities as well as potential threats to our security. That's why the Alliance is working with public and private sector partners academia and civil society, including the Czech Republic, to develop and adopt new technologies, establish international principles of responsible use while maintaining NATO's technological edge. We have established a new defense innovation accelerator, Diana, to solve critical security challenges with innovators, with investors, military end users and startups. Diana is about developing the next generation of dual use technologies for our defense, for our national security. And we have already launched the first call for innovative ideas in the fields of energy resilience, secure information sharing, and sensing and surveillance. Alongside NATO, we have established the, the first of its kind, 1 billion euro NATO innovation fund. This is the world's first multi-sovereign venture capital fund. Sounds like contradiction in terms, but we're able to square the circle here at NATO. Diana will help us develop deep tech and the fund will invest in it. 
our world is now as much a digital one as a physical one. And cyber is a constantly contested domain where the line between peace, crisis, and conflict is consistently blurred. This is why NATO takes the threats from state and non-state actors in cyberspace so seriously, and why we have de determined have determined uh, tasks and steps to guard against cyber attacks, and I play a role in NATO, both in innovation and cyber adaptation in our organization. This is key, a key part of our collective defense. Cyber activities can trigger Article 5 of the Washington Treaty as eventual severe attacks from space, where an attack on one ally is an attack on all. Cyber is a domain of operations, just like land, air, sea, and space. And a number of allies have offered to NATO the use of the national cyber effects. And NATO's cyber defense pledge is increasing allies' investment and capabilities in cyber. These initiatives and similar ones across the alliance are making our nations more resilient to cyber attacks, as well as to other forms of subversion and espionage. NATO is a unique platform where allies share information, address concerns, and take collective action. Also where we work closely with industry, the civilian sector and other partners. And of course, as I mentioned, the European Union is very, very, very close to us. And we are basically two sides of the same coin. This is our unique added value. This makes our deterrence more credible, our collective defense stronger, and our one billion people safer. And ultimately creates more stable, resilient, and prosperous and democratic societies. So I'm counting uh, on, on, on Czechia as a steadfast ally an important member of the European Union. And I remember when you had the presidency of EU Council, how much NATO EU you have pushed for. We're grateful for that. And also, I commit myself and our Secretary General to continue to work ever closer with the European Union. I mentioned Commissioner Jourova. There is a joint task force on resilience that Jens Stoltenberg and Ursula von der Leyen established. We are in this, in defending our Euro-Atlantic values to stimulate innovation and strengthen the resilience of our societies across the board. The challenge we face in these years is fundamental. It is about the world in which we, our children, and our grandkids will live. Whether this is defined by might over right or right over might, oppressed or free, safe and secure, or violent and war-torn. Through NATO, with unity, determination, and commitment, I know that Ukraine will win. The NATO's one billion people remain secure, and the future is bright. And I look forward to the 75th anniversary summit of NATO in Washington, D.C. in July of next year. We are the most successful alliance history, and this will continue to be the case. Thank you so much, and best of luck to your great conference.